If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question yourself before listening on. Particle 3 has an unknown charge, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume that the charge on that particle is positive. So we'll say that Q3 is greater than zero. Now what we want to do is perhaps explore the area around charges 1 and 2 and see if we can get the net force on charge 3 to equal zero. Now let's remember that charge 1 was stated to be positive and charge 2 is stated to be negative. Now if we try to place charge 3 between these two charges, for example, we would run into a bit of a problem because remember charge 3 is positive. So if we placed a positive charge there, then that charge would be repelled by charge 1 and therefore the force would be pushing charge 3 to the right. Similarly, because charge 2 is negative, it would be exerting an attractive force on charge 3, and it would also be pulling on charge 3 to the right. Well, because both of those forces are pointing to the right, they will not be able to cancel. So we can't put charge 3 between the two charges. We might therefore think that we can place the charge on the right side of charge 2. Now, because charge 2 is negative, it would again exert an attractive force, but this time that would be pulling charge 3 to the left. Charge 1 is positive, and therefore it would be repelling charge 3, pushing it away and to the right. Now it might seem that we could possibly get a net force of 0, because one force is going to the left and the other force is going to the right. But because charge 3 is closer to charge 2, and also because charge 2 has a greater magnitude than charge 1, that means that the attractive force that charge 2 is exerting is always going to be larger than the repulsive force that charge 1 is exerting. In other words, the force vector that's pointing to the left is always going to be larger than the force vector that's pointing to the right. In that case, these force vectors will never be able to cancel, and so the net force will not be equal to 0. So this side is also not going to work. Well, let's place charge 3 over on the left side of charge 1 and see if we can get that to work. Now again, charge 1 being positive would repel charge 3, in this case push it to the left, and then charge 2 being negative would attract charge 3 and pull it to the right. Now it turns out that these can be able to cancel, because although charge 1 has a smaller magnitude, it's also much closer to charge 3. So even though the smaller magnitude of charge would tend to make a smaller force, the fact that it's closer would actually tend to make it a larger force. So there will be a situation in which this force vector could potentially equal the magnitude of this force vector. Let's call the distance from charge 1 to charge 3 x. And then remember, we have a force that's pointing to the left and a force that's going to the right, and they're going to be equal in magnitude. Let's start with the force that's going to the left. That is an electrostatic force, so it's going to be the Coulomb's constant multiplied by the magnitude of charge 1 and the magnitude of charge 3, divided by the distance between the charges squared, so that would be x squared. We'll set that equal to the attractive force that was pointing to the right, and that will be k multiplied by the magnitude of charge 2, multiplied by the magnitude of charge 3, divided by the distance between them squared. Now, take careful note of the distance, because the distance from charge 3 all the way over to charge 2 is actually x plus l. So we'll have to make sure we include x plus l squared. Now this equation can simplify because we can divide out the k and also divide out the q3. And so we can actually rewrite the equation. Let's go ahead and fill in the values for q1 and q2 as well as the value for l. Notice that we, because of the absolute value around q2, we changed it from a negative to a positive value. We also converted the microcoulombs into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus 6, but we can actually cancel out that multiplication by 10 to the minus 6 on both sides. Now to solve for x we could actually take the square root of both sides. We could then cross multiply so that we have root 3x is equal to x plus 10. Let's subtract the x over to the other side. We could actually factor out an x so that we have root 3 minus 1. And then if we divide both sides of the equation by root 3 minus 1, we're going to see that x is equal to 10 divided by root 3 minus 1, which gives us approximately 14. And since we are measuring our distance in centimeters, that's what we would have here. We would have 14 centimeters. 
Now let's not forget that the x coordinate was actually located to the left of the origin. So that means that the x coordinate has to be negative 14 centimeters. And looking at the picture, we can see charge 3 is sitting on the x axis. That means the y coordinate is 0 centimeters. And so this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. You can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.